And here we are into game number one of this losers match in group C between Wild TP, you love to party, and Moe, sweet super sirs, who are retagged as um, Moe's Tavern. So I think they probably took over the title from that team. Uh, regardless, we are clearly moving rapidly through the picks, as I believe this game was probably remade. So as the game will be starting in 26 seconds, I quickly want to acknowledge that yes, Wild TP is the number one seed for this group, and they got knocked down quite early in a 2-0 upset by Team Cheesecake, who is the lowest seed in this group. So they're not where they want to be. Um, Quicker Sill is a different name. Um, I don't think he was one of their typical players, so I don't know if that's playing into this or, or what's going on there, but. Certainly Wild TP can need to step it up here as this is an elimination uh, series for them if they lose here or for example if or I mean, if Moe's lose here they also get knocked out so somebody is going home here. Um, obviously we don't know who it is yet but somebody is. Looking at lineups right here, Pestilence, Rhapsody, Nomad, Wretched Hag, and Engineer for the Legion side. Wild TP once again refusing to run a jungler. Uh, runs that dual support instead. I assume this will be rapidly pressing mid. Very strong lane combination. Majestics on that suicide is going to play the hag. And probably engineer nomad bot. Although, to be honest, I kind of like the solo nomad here and the aggressive tri lane. So yes, this is this is exactly what I like. Um, nomad doesn't really need to babysit. And he doesn't, he isn't helped by one too much. So he'll be just fine in the solo short lane. Running the aggressive tri lane up here. Gives the Legion side plenty of kill potential, of course. Three stuns. Very easy setup with Staccato, stuns on Rhapsody into Impale and Engineer Keg, plus the turret and the Dance Floor. There's a ton of damage coming out here for Wild TP in this aggressive tri lane. Majestics in middle should be just fine. Uh, as a solo laner, of course, Hag very used to that. We saw him uh, occupy the same role in the second game against uh, TCC, and he did not that well in the laning phase, but recovered and uh, wasn't quite able to carry his team to victory, but still. You know, had a high GPM, was impact impactful in team fights, and that's what you're looking for. Nighty, you're going to be soloing bot with this Nomad, and I think Nomad is absolutely a competitively viable hero. He's a bit of a glass cannon, as he do does tend to do a ton of damage, but if he gets jumped, he will die super fast. So in this team, I'm a little concerned about him, just because while there are three suns, there's the Bat Blast, there's the Engineer Field, um, there is some stuff to keep him alive, especially the Rhapsody Ultimate and Dance Floor. Um, on the other hand, you have this Kronos, you've got Solstice Devourer to lock him down, a potential arrow coming in from uh, Valkyrie. So if really any of those abilities manage to catch Nomad, then he could be in a ton of trouble because really it, it just takes a couple of seconds of him not being able to run around, not being able to go in Viz with his Dance Sandstorm and with his E, and all of a sudden he gets destroyed. So going to be perhaps a bit of a suffer game here for Nomad, but they are going to be running it against the Suicide Chrono, so it should be a pretty even lane. I suspect Nomad will be a little bit favored just because he's got better harass potential with the Wanderer and the E-Spell Mirage Strike actually going through, um, potentially putting a lot of damage on a Chrono, as Chrono has already taken a tree. So CS Battle should be won by Nomad just because of the Wanderer, and then of course that plus the Mirage Strike or the True Strike right there, doing plenty of damage to Chronos. Of course, Kronos has the time leave, so it's really unlikely he'll die, but he shouldn't get total free farm. This should be a, a one lane by Nomad. Meanwhile, in middle, we got Hag, and it was Engineer. Uh, sorry, not Engineer, Master of Arms in middle. Um, against this, with this Devourer, so it was, sorry, it's the Dev Master lane up against the Hag. That's what it is. It's Master of Arms is not a Legion side. Um, Master seems to have left, though, a little bit. Coming into the middle, Helping Solstice out as he is getting roamed on by this Rhapsody Engineer combo. Up top, Valkyrie versus Pestilence. Of course, Valkyrie um, potentially on the, on the receiving end of all these stuns, but with that leap, he should be relatively okay. Um, almost certainly won't win the CS battle just because they're at least going to dual lane this with Rhapsody Pest, but he should be fine picking up a few CS here and there, leveling pretty well um, and not dying. And really, Valkyrie does quite well just with levels, so. While she does like farm and she likes a strong early game, she can farm up a little bit with a call. Um, and so if she just gets a few items early on, if, she, if she's a little mobile, gets an Energizer or something like that up, and I believe that's what she's going to go for, uh, she should be relatively okay. 
we are going to see a Solstice in the jungle. So, if you play TMM, I'm sure you've seen this. Now, I don't think I've ever seen it run in a competitive game, and I think for fairly good reason. Honestly, if you're looking for an active jungler, Solstice certainly fits that bill. And he can jungle decently. Like, I mean, he certainly won't get kicked out if he's just if he's just left alone. It's not like he can't handle a creep camp. So the haste room up here is going to be taken by Raps. He almost eats an arrow there, but just out of the range. And she's now going to initiate a little bit here on Valkyrie, I think, but just without the Scottish Stones. And that's going to be it. Valk trading auto attacks there, and, and Smithix here on this route needs to be a little careful. Uh, meanwhile, over here, Devourer and Hag going at it, but De Dev's in some serious trouble here. Looking for the turnaround kill, possibly, but or maybe just taking the juke, says Hag's eating that bottle, trying to live. Devourer is going in some weird directions here. He's going on an adventure, and he might just rot and kill himself. That's what looks like what's going to happen. As up top here, Rhapsody and actually Engineer taken actually as the Legion's Courier falls to a couple of auto attacks. I don't know what the hell the Courier is doing up there, but Engineer nearly dying. Rhapsody getting a half as we have three heroes converging here from the Hellborn side. So nice pick off there, getting some gold for Solstice. And of course, forcing a rebuy of the Courier as it looks like Engineer will go back to base and buy it. He has 200 gold, so it shouldn't be an issue. Hot from Hag here as what a surprise that goes out. Of course the rot for Devourer isn't that helpful like I mean he's just not going to win this lane. Nice hook in there but Hag doesn't care she has blink and she's got the bottle and she'll go grab the Invis up there which oh shit actually Nighty you're going to fall on bottom for some reason I don't know how the hell he got that low she's going to be jumped there one auto attack, two auto attacks and Penguin there. Nighty you, that's a serious misplay. Like, there's no reason for him to be there with no health and no mana. He shouldn't be taking that much damage anyway. It's very possible Kronos just got more out of it than he did, and of course Kronos does have that bottle, so uh, certainly more regen there for him. But that's a pretty serious issue for Nighty because now he's level 5, Kronos is level 6, and with a little more harass here, we could see a Chronophil get dropped in Nighty and another kill come out, as the Suicide Chronos is becoming more and more popular for very good reason, because it seems to keep doing extremely well. Um, Bloodlust are coming out, and honestly, that's shocking. Um, it, it really shouldn't happen. Like, There's no way a solo nomad should die to Chronos, especially without a Chronophil. Time luck there coming out, as he will eat some harassment, but Chronos just like, whatever, I got a couple bottle charges, I'll be fine. And middle, Hag doing some damage here to Dev as he will activate the Rot. Get away. Looking for a hook back, possibly, but instead just choosing to chug that bottle and come right back in the lane. Engineer is here as well. He's still level 1. Perhaps looking for a setup kill on the Devourer. Will pot uh, Wretched Hag. So saying, you know, this Solstice is at 255 GPM, so that's good. Only level 3, not doing so great on the levels, but just about the same area as the supports. Um, and with Nomad here, that's the, the thing that's preventing his levels. He is helping Solstice jungle. And that's really the reason that Solstice is at 260 GPM right now, because normally Solstice is not jungle particularly fast unless he gets extremely favorable spawns. Shard Shot going out there, followed by a stun from Solstice, and the Valkyra will just miss. Impale stun and staccatos, and this is a dead Solstice. So... With the miss of the Valkyro, that was easily a, a cleanup kill onto Solstice, and that's going to be a problem. Honestly, I'm not sure if they, even with the Valkyro, they would have had enough damage to take out that um, that Pestilence. I mean, it's not like he got particularly low. Hook in on, on Hag right there, once again, Blink. So, Hag does not care. Illusions pop by Devourer, but there's a Sol Sonar Scream to go out and get them down a little bit, as Hag will pop some regen here. Meanwhile, on bot, Cronus putting some more harassment onto Night EU. And that's what I expected to happen, is... Just for Night EU to keep spamming that, so he's not going to go the bottle route. As Dev's going to take a haunt here in mid, but we'll be fine. He's not going to go the bottle route, but... Mm, 
I mean, that's certainly understandable. Usually, I think, with the refreshment change, you want two bottles on a team because then you can effectively control runes. You can just be like, I'll always go to one lane, you go always go to the other lane. Certainly, Hag loves having a bottle. So if you put one on Nighthound, or uh, not Night, Nighthound, Nomad, um, you know, Nomad also loves a bottle. He's squishy, so that will allow him to eat some harass here from Kronos. He can use that Mirage Strike freely and basically just continue to spam it until Kronos has no health and is forced to back out of the lane. Um, as Kronos will take a health bot here, so where's the Mirage Strike? There it is. Gonna cancel it. I mean, just, it does plenty of damage. So if he could just keep doing that because he had a bottle, then as there is the bottle on Nomad. So he does choose to go the bottle route just after the, the boots. So I do, obviously, I like that pickup a lot. He sort of, I think he really needs it. Rune will spawn in 10 seconds. Devourer is camping the bottom one as Kronos is going to be farming this lane. Top rune will be picked up by Rhapsody or Engineer as they camp it. So this is there going to be some rune luck here, and it is going to spawn top. And it's a haste. So Valk Arrow coming in, going to miss both. So they know the haste is up there, of course, between the Valk Arrow and the Ward. Rhapsody going to grab it and going to run up here top for Pesty as four heroes are up above the river, but not going to be too much happening there. Look at the resources real fast. We've got a golden experience lead here for Hellborn. Gold is not too substantial as Dev pops that invis looking for a hook onto somebody. Won't find it. Um, gold not too substantial. 2k experience though, so that's quite a bit. Of course it helps out with uh, Solstice in the jungle pushing an experience lead. As he has level 5, 230 gold per minute, and he hasn't been stunning at all. So this is, once again, sort of the issue with Solstice Jungle. If you just let him be and don't deal, you know, don't address him whatsoever, and he can get a Midas up and get some farm, that can be an extremely dangerous hero. Staccato stuns there on Devour. He's taking a ton of damage. There's the Haunt. Where's the Chrono Field? Well done there. So, uh, still taking a bunch of damage on Death Zone. He's going to fall into the back blast. Chrono's now going to have to get the hell out of here. As Solstice is jumping in, I'm going to, on this rush tag, will kill her. Uh, Rhapsody in a ton of trouble as well. Has nice time leap there on the Engineer, and this could be a 3 for 1 very easily. Ultimate getting charged up, but uh, Keg will push Kronos, or Engineer away. So Solstice trying to finish off Engineer there. Won't happen. Kronos still looking for Engie. Not going to find him. Nice juke spot there from Quicker Sill. As a port's now coming in on both towers, and Kronos is in a little trouble. Should have a time leap up. Is Impel Sun going to catch him? Yes. Actually, it doesn't go off as he has just managed to dodge it. Mid put tower push coming in. Nice hook there onto Rhapsody, and that's going to be a kill. No question. So Nasty Baboon there with a solid hook and to an end ultimate. So Kronos will skirt out of there. Not quite able to finish up Engineer, but he does not pay for it. Another hook coming out, and that's going to miss Hag. So 4 to 2 hero kills here for the side of the, uh, the Hellborn team, and they're doing fairly well here. Certainly a strategy that we would never have seen. Like, if, if this got picked up by Stay Green, I think Breaky would be, like, crapping his pants. Like, this is insane. You know, the Valkyrie, the Solstice in the Woods, Devourer. You know, not uncommon, but it's not like that. It is very common. He's going to ult Hag here, put some damage on her. And obviously no hook available, but Turret will go out. Hag has Haunt and Sonar Scream. That Keg is going to miss, so it's not like they're going to come in thanks to Master of Arms being there to support. But Devourer can take his Blood Chalice and Bottle, and of course that gives him mana back really fast. 10 minute rune is already taken, apparently. Yeah. I missed what it was. Let's see if we got a rune in there, Bottle. Doesn't. Kronos is DD. That's what it was. So Nomad, not feeling safe here. Drops the Chrono Field. Will actually spot Nomad thanks to that. And nice ultimate from Nomad. Just gonna be able to get away as the time leap is on cooldown. So that forces Nomad to port pick back to base actually. So Kronos will get some free farm here in this lane, as he's sitting at 350 GPM, highest farm in the game. And when your suicide player is the highest farm in the game, you're having a good game. As Valk ult is going out, and they're looking for a gank up here on top. Pestilence is scared as hell. There's a nice reward there, seeing everybody. Fork Lightning is going to hit as the hook just missed. Javelin not quite going to go out. So, 
Like I was saying, you know, some pretty unconventional heroes here for the Hellborn Psy. It's certainly Solstice Jungle fits that bill. So does the Valkyrie carry, and she's not having that great a game of 180 GPM, but of course she was highly contested in her lane. Um, nonetheless, I, I feel like Valkyrie's a bit of an underrated carry. I mean, she certainly has lots of carry potential. She doesn't, you know, carry quite as hard, I think, as a Moon Queen or a Gemini or something like that, but she can get active super early. Arrow coming out, not going to hit anybody as it is just a too short of that Rhapsody. Um, and, you know, if she gets a good early start, I think, like, for a slightly more aggressive team, she can certainly provide a lot of damage, that excellent stun, especially if she gets set up as four heroes out for the Hellborn team. They're already gonna get spotted by that Ward of Sight, or Rev Ward is. They're going to jump inside on the Valkyrie, and everything's going to get dropped, and she dies so fast. So Portal Key on Pestilence surprises the Valk. And, as a result, she will fall. Anyway, it's, you know, I think this is, you know, this is probably a really good lineup to do it, too, because Kronos is suicide, but he's also sort of the primary carry. Like, he's easily a harder carry than Valkyrie is. So, Valkyrie will get some farm, probably the number two farm in this situation, as Rhapsody's going to be in some trouble. No, Dev's not going to see her, and she's going to be able to skirt away. On bot, meanwhile, Kronos jumping Nomad once again, and he just has to leave. Nighty is not having a fun time down here. So for both teams, the short laners not having a great game. Nighty is not doing terribly at 275 GPM, but certainly Kronos at 340 is far superior. Similar situation with 160 GPM on that as an impale stun jumps in on the Kronos, but he'll be fine. Um, Hag coming in here as well, but actually going to drop the Chrono Field, and that's going to be a dead Hag. So Majestic suffering a bit there. As both Kronos and Valk will back up. Bugs and Kronos, of course. They know exactly where he is. And Pesty's going to fake fall back here, maybe? Looks like it. They're looking for a jump on this Kronos, and they can probably get one if he skirts up a little bit. Of course, Valkyrie is still here. Has the Javelin, if necessary. We'll throw it out here. We'll hit Kro Nomad. That's painful. And he's going to be dead so fast. So Pestilence had just left too, so he couldn't provide any sort of help to Night you there, and that was a pretty nice arrow. Just barely clipped Night you on that Nomad. Over here in middle, Ultimate coming out onto Rhapsody. She will die. The last auto attack takes her out. And Invis Ultimate there from Valkyrie, so Dev will survive. Solstice there, jumping on Deve uh Nice, ultimate. Gonna stop the blank, and jeez, Majestic just completely locked down. Ultimate from Solstice, channeled for about half a second, but it was just long enough to get charged out in there from Master of Arms. There's Hook being used to farm there by Devourer. Bugs will go into Chronos once again. So, Hellborn team taking a pretty substantial lead at this point. 8 to 3 hero kills, 7k experience, just over 4k gold. And this is not a Hellborn team that lacks late game. So, they're going to spot out the Legion side here and back the hell up. Um, Gank going to be somewhat un unsuccessful, as Kronos is still pressing his luck, really. Alder are going to come in here. Will hit Engineer, as they're just like, what do I do? Where, which way do I go? I can't tell. But they're not going to follow it up. Dance will get split down instead. And... You know, Legion side in a bit of a pickle. Because they have, they certainly have playing late game too with Nomad and Hag, but I would say Val Kronos is stronger. Um, add to that the Devourer who can initiate really without being afraid of anything because it'll just get that powerful. Backblast, everything goes up jumps onto Valkyrie, but she's not going to die. Actually, does did not get denied. So, the burst not quite enough for Majestics to finish off Valk, and Kronos was right there for his buddy. Doesn't even need to drop the ult, manages to kill Majestics in a couple of hits, and then deny his health. So, certainly not a great engagement there. As Dev's looking for a hook here. And Nighty, you just cannot find free farm anyway, anywhere. Ultimate from uh, Nice coming out here. Gonna stop just before the ultimate, and excellent hook back in. 
Impale Stun here from uh, Pestilence, and that's actually going to finish off Devour. He puts the Mirage Strike out once again, so Nomad will be fine, and Solstice now is in trouble. Turret gets dropped. Keg's going to hit. Nope, actually, he's going to dash shot. It's nicely done, but Impale Stun stops the charge from Solstice. Knight you going to be able to help finish off this kill and get to double tap, in fact. No goodies for you. The Panzer Armor actually went on to Valkyrie, so that was a bit of a misclick. That was sort of you just clicked the map in a frenzy, and since um, Solstice died a second before it went out, it just went on to Valkyrie. So that's a certainly, finally a favorable exchange here for the, uh, for the Legion side, as they take two for nothing. They managed to save Night EU on that uh, Nomad, despite some solid plays from Hellborn. Really good hook from Dev. And nonetheless, that will be a death. Valk is invis, scouting out this hag. And Majestics might be in some trouble if they choose to follow this up. So I'm going to help her clean up the creep wave here. Okay, just the creeps, I guess. Deb coming in. There's an arrow in her face. We'll get hooked, and that's going to be a death. So Invis rune used to great effect there. Now Deb will clean up these creeps. You know, on bot Cronus getting jumped by Pestilence. Uh, oh my god, all the mines. Not going to be enough. Cronus will survive. Despite having the bugs on him, know exactly where he is, but it doesn't matter. Stab's looking for an engagement here. Onto Pesty will get the ultimate off, and here comes all sorts of stuff from the Hellborn side. There's a charge shot and the javelin, that being enough to finish him off. So, Valkyrie becoming a serial killer there. As Hellborn are moving efficiently. It's worth noting that, you know, they don't really have. I think the one thing they're lacking over there, <laughs> nice hook back onto Kronos for no reason. Um, the one thing they're sort of lacking here on the Hellborn side is push. Uh, Valkyrie calls, um, Rot from Dev and Solstice's auto attacks can do a little bit. And the Asp Bump helps a little bit as well. But there isn't a huge amount of tower damage. And in general, they're going to have a bit of an issue pushing down creep waves. Jump in here on the Engineer. He's going to take a bunch of damage. Gets the Keg Stun off. Not going to hit the Javelin. Turret goes off as well. Pops the Energy Field even as he's just throwing everything to try to live. Um... The Legion team sort of responding here, but not very effectively as Kronos is just going to piece ultimate from Valkyrie as they want to make sure everybody's okay. Certainly not a bad decision. Perhaps even coming over here to, gra to grab a kill on Nomad. Chronofield is available, so I assume that's just going to get dropped there on the... Yep, and then we're going to fire it right into an arrow. Just enough damage to kill Night Eater. Mid tower goes down, but... Or son, bot. Hey, do you not having a great time? 300 GPM just below, right at the same time, really, as, uh, same amount as, uh, Senelex on this pestilence. And now, of course, Senelex taking it over. But the farm is pretty clearly in favor of the Hellborn side. Just about 6.5k gold, 11k experience in their favor. Cronus at 440 GPM. Solstice at 366. So. The Hellborn have destroyed Tower falls. Rhapsody just hanging out there. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. Um, it's worth noting, there are two Alchemist Bones on this Hellborn side. Kronos has one, and Solstice has one. So, Solstice Alchemist Bones build is not uncommon. Um, he does do that fairly often, especially if he gets good early game farm, because he spends so much time in the jungle anyway, you might as well just put an Alchemist Bones on him. And... Increase your GPM up there. <laughs> Dev ultimate going on to a Predator. As these triple stacks, I believe, will get cleaned up. Uh, so, and then the Thunderclaw on Kronos. I love that. I really do. I think this is a massively underrated item. It works well on Valk, too, for that matter. Um, it helps you farm in a similar way as a Ruined Cleaver, because it helps you clean up Creep Waves. It doesn't scale quite as well. But in terms of early game damage, it does a little more than Cleave, as it's magic damage coming out early and Cleave's auto attacks aren't that powerful yet. It gives you a little more range than Cleave does, um, because the lightning can bounce as far as it can. And it really helps you farm and push. So some slightly unconventional builds going out here. The two Alchemist Bones, the Thunderclaw there for, uh, for Coronas. As we see, Valk, of course, got her Energizer. That's not that surprising. Valk coming in once again as Chronofield is available. Engineer going to get seen here. And he will get killed immediately as everything just gets dropped. 
And Kronos is going to get blocked down a little bit here, but then you take in the Master of Arms ult, and he'll be okay. Chronophil gets dropped, and now Pestilence is in a ton of trouble. Bat Blast is onto Kronos, and Rhapsody is going to pop her ult as Kronos runs away and will pour it out. So he'll be fine. Valk with the Energizer running away, and Nomad's going to kill Master in a couple of hits. Valk going to get dropped by the Pestilence stun there, and will fall to those Staccatos. Meanwhile, Top Tower falls to Kronos, and, sorry, Solstice and uh, Devour. So good exchange here from the from the Legion side. They lost Engineer, of course, a hard support, so who cares? And they picked up three kills. And the ultimate comes out here onto Hag. That's the real Hag, and she just, just gets away. Now, Tusk of Revelation going out there, and Dev's in a ton of trouble. Will die here. Yep, gets denied though, so well done. Ultimate going out from Nomad as so Solstice. Kronos coming in here to clean up Hag. Rhapsody's gonna die as well, and now. Nomad and NG are on the run. Turk goes down to uh, slow both of them, but we're going to have a time leap up from Kronos in a second. And he's going to wait here, looking for something. We'll find Pesty. Puts the bugs down and the Impale stun, so Kronos taking a ton of damage here, but... Will he die? Yes! Nice keg there. Well played from NG. The energy field also goes down. Now, <laughs> man, so he's... So much trouble. Solstice is putting the... Uh, getting the bugs on him, plus the... It, and now Nighty is going to follow him up, but eats the arrow, and Solstice is going to get out of there. And Kronos is salty about the amount of gore procs that that uh, Senelex got there on that pestilence. Apparently, every hit was a gore proc. Caps lock, very angry. Yeah, no kidding, badmanners.org. Especially when you're playing Kronos, and there's going to be a point in this game where he just, uh, like, rewinds the crap out of everything. And then they're going to be like, oh, that's not luck or whatever, so yeah. Like, I mean, when you're playing, yeah, okay, gore procs, you can get unlucky. But, Kronos, you know there have probably been several times already in this game where you got a really lucky rewind and it saved your ass or helped you get a kill or something like that, so... Yeah, you know, what goes around comes around, buddy. Nonetheless, he is farming extremely well. 467 GPM, Solstice is up over 400, 300 for Dev, and just 208 for Valkyria. She's suffering a little bit, not really being prioritized. She is sort of being played as a number 4 here. Kronofil gonna get dropped and nothing as Hag blinks away, so... Well played there from her. Arrow goes in as they're going to clean up some of these stacks. D warding happening as well as Master Rob's going to get jumped by Pestilence and going to get destroyed actually as though Pesty gets hooked back in by Dev. And now Dev's in some trouble. He's going to fall. So nice Rhapsody ultimate there as he's going to be able to live. Uh, Moa still in some trouble. Still has the bugs on him and despite the invis will fall here. But Valkyrie going to be able to get away. Kronos also going to be able to get away as he is invisible. Solstice jumping in, Dust of Revelation comes out, but hits nothing. Solstice now has the Frozen Light, and there's the Dawnbringer. So early DB from him, and that's obviously a very powerful light, and very common for Solstice. Javelin goes in, will hit something, it's going to be the Rhapsody on 5 seconds. It's going to get jumped in here by the uh, Kronos, actually, and they're going to put up hundred of stuff onto Pestilence. Rhapsody will also fall, but so does Valk, gets uh, killed so quickly. No man out going to die, and Kronos is still in the front lines here, looking for more kills. Engineer is in a ton of trouble, he's going to fall, but first Hag, nope. Actually, yeah, he will be able to catch Hag here. Where is it? Where's the auto attack? No blink available for Hag. As the, I don't know, Majestic's actually with the haunt. There's the blink. Time leap, there it is. That's going to kill him. Um, Engineer's still down here, super low. If Kronos notices him, run by the creeps down he won't. Instead, going to choose to take out this mid tower. Should be able to if he wants to come back in and let the creeps eat some damage. No. Not choosing to play it like that. We'll instead just decide to leave it alone as two help two cannons over here will siege it down pretty damn fast. So strong engagement there for the Hellborn side. They lost Master of Arms, they lost Valkyrie, they lost Solstice, but they picked up four kills, including everybody except for that lowly engineer. So all the farmers on Legion side dying. It's obviously not what you're looking for. And over here, Master of Arms is going to be stacking the Ancients as Ward City is going down in mid. One ward already countered here. This one's certainly in range. 
and I think Rhapsody just waiting for the opportunity where he can be like, yes, I can safely get over there and kill that ward. And Senelec's there in that pestilence will steal the gold from him. That's so mean, man. Your supports are suffering. They don't have any money. As up top, Valkyrie can get picked off by Negu here. Just so much damage. Lo Leap does not go over the cliff. Too long a fade time there on that, that ultimate. That's the one problem I have with Valkyrie ultimate. It's really good. Um, used defensively, not so good because the fade time is extremely long. Two second fade time. That's just painful. So Valk still not doing very well at 200 GPM, but it doesn't matter because the rest of her team is sort of exploding. Kronos getting up near that 500 GPM mark, and he's just becoming a serious problem. Um, so at this point, solutions for YLTP? Take a really good team fight. They've got the back blast, they've got the pesty jumps, a good initiation, nice Rhapsody ultimate for, uh, for saving somebody, of course, Engineer as well. I mean, I feel like they're all just farming off in different places, but they're not going to win that battle. There's two Alchemist Bones here on the Hellborn side, plus the Thunderclaw, and now the Charged Hammer from uh, Kronos, who's actually soloing Kongor. There is a ward up here, so I think they know about it, but he's DD'd, and with all that attack speed, he can just kill it. He's actually going to eat the stun there, and nearly loses the token thanks to it, but still DD'd, and they're not content to take him. See Valkyrie getting any kill there. Jesus, two hits onto Rhapsody. That's painful. So Kronos exploding pretty hard here, and you know, Hellborn have have a fairly good team fight as well, especially with that Chronofill to set it up. Yeah, Falk takes kills with Arrow. That's that's true. <laughs> Kronos is just an angry person, I feel like. Penguin here, uh, hook and a miss as he jumps away with no health. So with the Aegis up, they are now going to push in middle and take the secondary tower pretty easily. Javelin coming in here, not going to hit anybody. And Kronos is basically just sitting in the front lines and go, I can kill these towers, you can't do anything about it. Bot second first primary target to go down as Nomad will port back to base, so good push there. Master Rome's going to drop his goo, of course, that's offensive. And these towers are just going to get destroyed. Bugs there onto Kronos. Assassin's Shroud as Valkyrie's looking for an arrow. Actually hits Chrono, or Nomad. Impel Stun hits two. Sagato's onto Kronos as well. He's going to drop in. Not going to be able to do anything. There's the goes to the running field, and perhaps he's destroyed. Ultimate there onto uh, uh, Engineer. She's going to die. Hag looking for the kill, actually, as Kronos is super low. Solstice will fall, but of course there goes the token. Trucking head on Pestilence is up. Nomad looking for a turn now onto Kronos. Is he's just going to be like, yeah, I don't care. Ultimate from Nomad actually is, he should care, because there he goes. Bat Blast actually it's nothing because of that. Uh, Dev hooking in Night Eater there, and Nomad's going to fall. Valkyrie in a lot of trouble here, will leap away, and might actually live as she ports out. Dev's going to jump over the hill. Valkyrie will port away, of course. Dev having bugs on him, that's a bit of an issue. And Hag gonna pursue. Ultimate and hook there, and now Hag in some trouble. Will die, oh my god. Just enough damage to take out that Hag. So, mid tower is successfully defended, as the Legion lose four heroes and take four as well. But a, um, an engagement, they, lose, they do lose a token, so that's slightly helpful, but... Uh, of course, Valkyrie staying alive and Engineer staying alive, not particularly great. So, no, right, Pesty didn't die, did he? What am I even talking about? Engineer died, so... Yeah, certainly in favor of Legion side, then, is they got the token and Pesty survived compared to Valkyrie on the Hellborn side. So, a successful defense there from Legion, as it doesn't look like Hellborn's really quite ready to push base. They, it took him a bit of time to siege that tower down, so... Mm. Look at items real fast. Blood Chalice, Soul's Bulwark, Shrunken Head, and Portal Key on Pestilence, as he's farming quite well. 356 gold per minute. Perhaps he's saying on just Striders and Dust the Revelation, so poor ward support. Uh, Nomad has Energizer, Ghost Marchers, Assassin's Shroud, and Shield Breaker, so like I said, Glass Cannon. Arrow gonna be in... Nope. Keeps faking it. There goes Kronos. Yeah, it's good. Arrow's actually going to hit the creep, but the Chronofill goes down. Majestics is just dead. 
What you I actually walked about? into the corner field there. So Penguin here is once again picking up a ton of kills. It's a fake Rhapsody. Solstice is not choosing to engage. So this bot secondary tower now in some trouble. Already taking some damage, but it's pretty easily to go down here as Dev and Valkyrie. Looking to kill it. Kronos hunting the opponent's jungle. The top tower going down for the Hellborn side as they finally have all their tier 1s taken down at 32 minutes. And only one of their own secondary towers is still left standing. And of course that is the top tower. And plenty of damage on that mid base tower as well as Hellboard are grouping up down here looking for a 5 man engagement. And we'll push bot. Jump over here. Not going to hit anything with the hook. Arrow going to go in and take out Engineer just as Pestilence initiates, so that's a terrible timing for them. Shrunken head on to Pesty, and he's going to get locked on the Devourer ultimate. Uh, Angie looking for a Chrono Field here, will hit it. Nice three-man keg stun as, man, Master of Arms actually. Finally, Engineer falls. Master of Arms is already dead. So is Solstice, as he actually buys back. Sorry, no, Devourer is dead. Solstice, sold. Uh, Solstice is dead, and there goes Valk as well. So, Chrono's getting chased down. Terrible fight for the... Hellborn side. They did pick off three. Rhapsody, Pesty, and Engineer all died. But that's two supports in the Initiator compared to everybody dying in the Hellborn side except for, for Kronos the Gary. So if you had to keep one here alive, that's certainly the one you pick. But that's certain. I, I don't think that you're going like, yeah, let's take an engagement where only one hero gets left alive. Meanwhile, Nomad and Hag, um, arguably the, her the heroes that need it most on the Legion side, are still alive. So of course, Hag just picked up that Grimoire to add to her Steam Boots and Bottles, so she does not need to spend any time dead right now, or she can't be farming. Engineer finally on the, on the Legion side has a push book on top of his Striders and Wards, so a little more farm here than that Rhapsody. And that's probably a Shield Breaker 3 here on Nomad. Yeah. So Nomad going to be hitting super, super hard. The question is, can he stay alive? And so far, that hasn't been too much of a problem. Most of the times he's died, it's been on pickoffs. In the team fights, he hasn't been focused on killed too much. So I think the uh, Hellborn side is going to have to remedy that a little bit, especially if they want to win. You know, dropping the Chrono Field onto, onto Nomad will result in his death awfully fast. And if you don't do that, he's going to be invisible all the time with the Assassin Shroud, the Mirage Strike, the Sandstorm, and doing a ton of damage. Hellborn, meanwhile, souls Bulwark on top of the Whispering Helm and Charged Hammer, and of course, Alchemist Bones from Chrono, so that's to look like a Demonic Breastplate. Dawnbringer, and the Mighty Blade, plus Abyssal Skull and Alchemist Bones from Solstice, so I'm guessing that's a Shrunken Head. Certainly viable here with all of Hag's damage, Engineer Field, as the Reed Heroes are sitting down here waiting for somebody to farm that bot lane. It is going to be Nighty U, and they're going to put the ultimate down, and Nighty U, you're in some trouble, buddy. As the stun comes in there, and everything, just wow, dies in a second. So nice pick there. Once again, it's it's not the team fights. Nighty U's getting picked off in places like that. So good use of the Valk ultimate offensively in that situation. And it looks like there's going to be some pushing of bot lane, but probably not a concerted effort as Nighthound's back in a... Sorry, Nomad is back in a minute. I keep saying Nighthound. Air gonna come in here, hit nothing. Hook though onto Rhapsody and she's dead. Fork Lightning actually gonna finish her off. And just jump in here by Kronos on Hag and man. So much auto attack damage. Between the demonic breastplate and a charged hammer, I mean that's two warp clefts. And Jesus. They don't even need Kronos, they're just gonna take this bot tower by themselves. Poor glyph use there because now they can just focus the creeps until the, the, it, it wears off. But Hellborn choosing to buy it, to get out here as Majestics does buy back. Black Blast gonna hit only Solstice, not gonna do too much damage actually. So does the uh, Sonar Scream, and he will be able to run away quite easily. We're gonna be countered here. Oh, jump in, but Majestics will also blink away. Javelin going in, not gonna hit anybody. Pretty easy to dodge. Kronos will sort of join his team now. It seems like. It's possible he just wanted to finish up his breastplate before he re-engaged. It's notable he does not have a buyback at this point, so... So you know what he does except for Valkyrie and Master of Arms. Master of Arms not being that important. Um, but just so many auto attacks. Just look at that attack speed there from Kronos. And that's not a Nellor Parasite or anything, that's just his natural always attack speed. Between the breastplate and the charged hammer, he hits 
damn fast. And of course, since his time lock is an attacks based ability, that's going to mean he's going to be stunning people very, very often. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a wingbow here, just because more attack speed. Get it. So Valkalt going off. They're going to try to spot somebody out. They will see Majestics here, but there is a word of rev, so they know he's there as well. And Majestics going to get caught here actually as well. Going to dodge the arrow, but man, ate the blank. It didn't matter because he went time leap and so much damage. Just immediately wrecked. Of course, he does not have anything besides that Grave Locket and Grimoire, so it's a bit of a problem. Nomad going to find an opening. Actually, Dust of Revelation goes out, but leap away from Valkyrie, followed by the Energizer, and she will be fine. Nomad's still dusted. And Kronos looking to re-engage, but won't happen. Honestly, that could be it. that that could have been a major game-changing fight if he did decide to jump Nomad and got Pesty in the Chrono Field. Then he could probably have killed both of them. At least he would definitely have killed Nomad, and very possibly could have gotten Pesty dead or close to it by the time the Chrono Field ended, so. If that would have resulted in an easy bot tower push. Just these mines have just been sitting here waiting for somebody to take them out. Krongor is available, so we'll see if the Hellborn side decide if they want to go for that again. Kronos farming these agents, getting his gold up. He does have a buyout now. And looking for an engagement here as Solstice jumping in other traps here, but it takes Staccato Stones. Jump now, Impale from Stun, uh, from Pestilence, and the Keg actually not going to do anything thanks to the <laughs> hook back onto Solstice. So that was a pretty terrible engagement right there. As NG will take a little harassment, but nothing happening as Energizer are popped on both sides. Doesn't look like either side really willing to engage at this point. Double Ward of Revs. I have to imagine that was a mistake. Yeah, NG and Rapsy both placing one. It's a little miscommunication there, but not a huge deal. This so Legion side is just terrified of everything. Grouped up here. They want to make sure that they're not doing Congor. And they really feel afraid of being by themselves for good reason. They've been using that Valkyrie's Prism to great effect, hitting pickoffs. And despite all the rev wards here, apparently the Legion side not feeling very safe about farming in the jungle. Hellboard, meanwhile, have no such qualms as they're just hanging out by themselves in the woods, killing all their creeps. Kronos once again soloing Kongor. And they may not have seen this because they don't have vision inside the pit, but actually Nomad can run over here and he will see Kronos jumps away right before the impale. A huge play. If they had caught Kronos there, there's a real good chance they could have kill him, killed him. There was no team support there, and the Valkyrie Prism obviously doesn't matter with the bugs. So they could very possibly have locked him down long enough to take him out. And though he does have a buyback, that certainly would have forced it out. Of course, 550 gold per minute on Kronos here, 428 on Solstice. Valkyrie's recovered a little bit of 230, and Devs pretty much stayed at that 300 all game. Valk, meanwhile, does have a nullfire. So that's going to be helpful. Pasty is much closer to his uh, breastplate, having picked up the warp cleft, needing just the second uh, armor item, or they're technically a third armor item, and the recipe. So we should have that relatively soon. As so many wards down here, and the entire Hellborn team is looking to do Kongor, but obviously they know that they can't just take it for free. I mean, really, one, two, three, four, five. Five rev wards down here. Six, sorry, there are six. There were six. And a word of sight, and a word of sight was here, but it got countered. So now the hell war the Legion has no vision of this bot rune, bot river area at all. And they're all just sitting in Congor, and they're not engaging on them. Because they know, oh, they know that they're going to come in here expecting the Congor kill. And there it is. They're going to initiate here on the Engineer. He's going to take a bunch of damage. Impel's on in the background. As Raps is going to drop the ultimate for no reason, but going to get ulted. Chronos in the back. Going to take out Majestics. No problems. Raps, also falls. Pestilence sends Nomad up. Pesty has that shrunken head. It wears off, and now he's in a ton of trouble. Will fall here, no question. Um, Nomad just going to get the hell on out of there. It's a four for nothing exchange. They're going to finish off Convoy here, and that could turn into a game. Game ending fight, because this could be easy token for Kronos. As the arrow goes out, just make sure Nomad's not nearby. 
Alchemist Bones get dropped by Kronos, in fact, in favor of the token. Certainly not a bad decision there. And this is going to be a push down the middle. Where the tower's mostly dead, and this should probably be Rax. Because they're at the point now where they can just have Kronos, and maybe even Solstice and or Devour, um, just sit in the base and destroy things. So Rhapsody and Engineer are both respawning. Their support, so doesn't take much. Turret gonna get killed super fast. Glyph goes off, but damn, Chronos attacks so damn fast. Genjuro there on Nomad. That's easy, Rax killed though. As they need Pesty for the initiation, they just don't have it without him. Bot now gonna get taken out actually, as Nomad is invis here. The Solstice will not spot him. So there goes Bot Tower. And Kronos is just in the front lines. He's got that uh, buff from the Charge Hammer on him. As there goes the Lightning Speed as well. And he's just hitting so damn fast. Two and a half attacks per second. He isn't going to get jumped on here. Will take a ton of damage. And still not going to die thanks to the Rewinds and the Lifesteal. Everything getting dropped on Nomad as he falls. And he gets the token back up. Engineer going to follow as well. Uh, Kronos going to jump in here into the everything. Actually going to take a lot of damage here. Having to pop a Chalmers Bane. Puts the Kronos field down, and now Majestix is going to fall as well. Nice ultimate from Rhapsody, going to prevent any damage from coming out on her. Um, but the GG's are called by the Legion side, and while TP, way down, two racks down, and that's going to be the game. They're now 0 for 3 in this uh, Group C bracket, so they're one win, or one loss away from complete elimination, and they were the number 1 seed coming in here. They lost the number 4 seed, I believe Sweet Super Surge is the number 3 seed, so, this is not great performance from them, and it's sort of hard to figure out what's going wrong because their drafts are a little strange. I think they would do better if they'd emphasize junglers a little more, but it's not they've been, like they've been picking wrong. It just seems like they keep getting caught out. You know, Nighty U kept getting caught out, Majestics kept getting caught out, 12 deaths on Wretched Hag, like that just can't happen. So, I don't know what the situation is, I, I don't know if it's just map awareness not being there. With the dual supports, you'd think they'd have wards all over the place. Um, but certainly Wild TP has to go back to the drawing board a little bit and figure out what they're doing wrong because it seems like they're just not outplaying their opponents and they've done that for a lot of this uh, Haunter season too. So whatever is going wrong for them, they've got to hope that they'll be able to fix it in game two because game one goes to Moe slash Sweet Super Sirs. Not sure exactly which one they go, as a they do play they did play very well. So let's move